back, everyone. We're here live at IBM Pulse in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage with the Cube for IBM Pulse, IBM's big cloud show. A lot of big game changing news here. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. It's the Cube. We go out to the events. My next guest is Jason Gardner, Vice President of Pure Systems Product Management at IBM. Welcome back to the Cube, Cube alumni. Thank you. Boy, the world's changed. Uh, <laughs> Cloud is growth, middleware, billion dollars of software investments, uh, new capabilities, software kind of under the hood. Yep. Big changes. How do you Absolutely. feel about it, and what's your your uh, what's your summary so far? I think uh, you know very excited about it. Um, when I look at the overall change that's happening within the overall IT industry and what's happening with you know cloud, is it's really transforming the way that IT looks at its economics, and it's really not just about a set of technologies or a set of processes, but it's really around changing business models for companies, and I think that's really what excites me about this whole thing. So reinventing of the cloud is a business focus. Um, but pure, how do you guys handle that from a middleware standpoint? Because you have a lot of legacy, so you get you know, Greenfield or you know, new expansion, and now you have existing. So what are some of the things you guys announced today? Yeah, so I think probably the biggest thing that we announced was we announced a pure application service, which is um, which is based on the soft layer, which is really the ability for us to be able to take traditional software, such as middleware, and be able to bring it to public cloud. Um, and really the way that we do that is we have our application, you know, I'd say 20 months ago, is one of the big topics that we talked about there was around patterns. Um, and the pattern concept encapsulates complex topologies, treats it as a single entity for deployment onto your private cloud enterprise. But what we've done now is we've taken that pattern, you can now deploy it to public cloud. So if you build your patterns in your private, you can move them to public, or the other way around, you can do some dev tests in public and move them to private. And the patterns is now a foundation technology to allow you to transition from one to the other, and it's really around the hybrid capabilities that clients are looking for. So I think that's really what's exciting with the announcement that we have today. So we have a beta going on with the Pure Application Service on SoftLayer, and um, we got a lot of great clients that are uh, that are using it right now and really getting some good traction out of it. So we're excited. Is that is the idea that it should be a seamless sort of transition? From yeah, absolutely. Public you, to private when, and back. Jason? When you bring in things, you know, really what the whole concept is to extend the boundaries of the internal data center to include the public cloud. That's really what we're trying to do here. Um, and so whether it's technologies like the pure application system or pure application service or whether it's our smart cloud orchestrator and some of our you know application performance management and all of the IT operations software that we run that's really what it's about it's around it's about taking this closed data center that you have and extending it to include the cloud so that it becomes much more seamless and you can move workload back and forth orchestrate across how have patterns evolved matured since you guys first announced pure yeah. Um, because you were the first to have that concept. Everybody used to talk about that concept. IBM was really the first to actually have, you know, pro what I would say, productize it. Yeah. Uh, so you had a, a, a lead there. Um, but as well, you have an ecosystem that's contributing to the patterns. And so I would imagine you have had a steep ramp in terms of pattern maturity. But I don't know if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, it definitely. We learned we learned early on that it's it's a pattern led. Right, it's the workload first, the system second, which is why moving it to the public cloud is just a natural step for you because the public cloud is just infrastructure and it's really starting at the workload. Um, and so the patterns have really taken off and we've got over 200 middleware patterns from ISVs and from IBM. Um, and this is really what the lead, uh, the lead generator is for us. But it's also evolved, right? It's not a static technology. And, as you look at cloud, the cloud, the race for the cloud is going to be won by the ecosystem, right? And to embrace the ecosystem, you need to be open. And so I think the pattern technology is really going to evolve and continue to evolve to incorporate more technologies like heat and hot um, standards such as Tosca are really going to be um, a major uh, contributor to creating traction within patterns and continue to grow that uh, capability. And we're going to evolve patterns um, over time in that same fashion um, because it's really the bread and butter of the technology to move it back and forth. So I like what you said, the race of the cloud will be won by the ecosystem and you got to have open yep. as part of that equation. 
What does it mean to have open patterns? Well, it's not that the pattern is open, like the content. It's the it's the framework technology, right? Do you have a proprietary scripting language, or do you use Chef or Puppet? Do you have, you know, is it a proprietary, you know, language that that talks about the topology, or is it, you know, something like Hot? Um, that's really what it's about. It's around the foundation framework. You know, you could take a look at Java, the explosion of Java in, you know, the 1990s really was to be able to take a program and run it on multiple platforms because it's just a framework. Java itself is not an application. It's all the technologies, all the innovation is in the application itself. That's the same thing with patterns is it's just creating that ubiquitous layer to move you from public to private, from system to system. Um, it's the foundation framework. And the reason why Java took off was because it was open. So give us an update on Pure. Uh, Peter was on before, Peter McCaffrey. He talked about some of the latest IDC numbers. Market's growing at, I think, 75%. You guys are growing close to, uh, let's say, 175% according to yeah, IDC. Yeah. Uh, um, so where are you seeing traction? Where's that Where's that growth coming from? Some of it's got to be coming from your you know, traditional server business. Some of it's got to be incremental. I wonder if you could address that. Yeah, so I think, um, so this is really what's getting us excited here because um, we had a fantastic uh, 2013. We grew um, very, very fast and a lot of traction with our clients. Um, but some of the stats underneath that, I'm kind of a numbers guy. And, you know, almost 30% of our sales last year were brand new customers to IBM. And IBM's not exactly a small company. So there's not a lot of customers out there that have never done business with IBM. And so it's a technology that's attracting new clients. The second piece to it, though, that I think that was really um, getting us fired up is that 35% of our sales in the fourth quarter were repeat buys, which means that customers bought, they implemented, hit production, liked it, saw enough value in it to buy more. Um, and so as you create more customers, you get more people going into production, get more people buying. And so that's really kind of an exciting sort of it's the beginning of the hockey stick is that sort of equation there. A lot of service provider traction there? Or? Yeah, quite a bit of service service traction there. Uh, for the most part, you know, I think the um, it was a lot of, I'd say, traditional, um, traditional clients, especially in the banking and, and insurance space. Uh, the insurance space is going through its transformation, especially in the healthcare space uh, right now, um, and a lot of government uh, around the world. So we did sell in... Um, you know, over 30 or 40 different countries um, last year, and so that traction is really worldwide. And it's there's a few industries that are sticking out, but but uh, really great traction there. Jason, I want to ask you about the um, you said you're into the numbers and you get a lot of new uh, clients. 70% of the attendees here have been reported as new to Pulse. Okay. So you got software is bringing in some some new yep. new kind of new mojo, if you will, new customers. Um, what about the existing customers? Because on on prem, the hybrid cloud is the message. I mean, basically, yes. I mean, bottom line, it's hybrid cloud. You got big data meets hybrid cloud. Put some Watson on top of it. Dress it up with the Watson suit. You got a good solution. But in the middleware, it's hybrid. Yes. That means data center on premise is really critical. Yes. Can you talk about how that affects your roadmap, where you are, what tweaks you're making, what new capabilities in context to the enterprise buyer? Yeah. So, so I think in looking at the enterprise buyer is we did a great job at building out a fantastic system, you know, cloud in a box, right? Being able to roll it into an enterprise, be able to run patterns. We've taken that concept, we brought it to the public cloud, so to be able to provide that hybrid capability. But in, in parallel, we're also focusing on that system itself. Um, and, you know, we've got some great announcements coming up here where we're um, uh, going to be coming up with a new version, which is really going to focus on I'll call multi-system management. So right now, today, you kind of manage yourself in isolation or manage yourself in pods, but what we're doing is we're taking that and we're going to be able to manage high availability, multi-system deploys, and you know, looking at really providing a single um, viewpoint into the management of your overall system and the management of an application across multiple sites, disaster recovery, high availability, what is the coolest thing you've seen with some of your customers? I was reading the tweets here. We've got the crowd chat going on. 
Yeah, it says uh, Marie and, and Tom's session made great points about using pure with science. Great stuff, right? Yeah. So uh, just anecdotally, you know, you're talking to customers out there and looking at the landscape. You run the product management. So you, when it hits the market, what are some of the coolest, cool things you've seen? Game-changing new things that surprise you, and then just, wow, that was impressive. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Marie and Tom's, uh, you know, use at, this, at the Desert Research Institute is a very innovative way to use the patterns. I think that's really cool. Um, to me, I think probably the biggest one that I've seen is, you know, clients when they see it and they actually start talking about it themselves is really what gets me up. And, you know, we talk about it as being a time compression machine, right? Something that took you months now takes, you know, weeks or days. Something that took weeks or days now takes hours. Um, we have a client who can update their entire enterprise service bus, like 18 different middleware pieces to it. Um, they can build that from ground up in less than three hours, and they can switch it over in less than three minutes. Where before, they used to spend long weekends to be able to do that once a year, and they could never be very innovative because they could only do it once a year, and it was the scariest 72 hours that yeah. they had of the year, and they had all this preparation for it, and now they can do it on essentially almost a weekly basis, they build up the second system, switch it over with three minutes, and they keep the old one around for a day or two to make sure nothing's wrong, and then they work on the next one. And they've been able to ping pong back and forth and be able to drive some very rapid innovation there. And I think that's, you know, that rapid innovation, that's really something that's cool and exciting because as you look at the, the leaders of the next generation of IT are gonna be those that can move fast. So you're saying the game changing thing is time. It is, absolutely, because you can't buy time. Yeah, and also time is money, as they say literally. You know, transactions, putting uh, things in the hands of the customer. Um, explain to the folks patterns one more time, because, you know, patterns, it's kind of elusive. What is, yeah. a, what is a pattern? So, I'm glad you asked that question, because, um, you know, we've been going at this for about 18, 19 months, and, you know, really, I'll be honest with you, the best way to see it is see it in action. Um, but a pattern is an encapsulation of a topology. So if you think of a web application, a web application contains HTTP servers, it contains web servers, caching, security like LDAP, includes a database. All these things are all these individual parts that are deployed in your enterprise across a wide variety of different systems. A pattern encapsulates that as a single entity. And then, be able to help manage that topology. And to manage the topology by managing its elasticity, the performance of it, you know, how it gets deployed, whether it's dev, test, or production, what kind of operating system is underneath it, and deals with all the mundane things that it takes to just install software. Except it does it as a single entity, you can monitor it, manage it, maintain it as, as one, as opposed to as 10, 15 different individual piece parts. Yeah, this concept of we call it a single managed entity, you know, taking liberties with the small medium enterprise yeah. <laughs> acronym. But um, enterprises are starting to realize that, first of all, if they can put in that chunk of infrastructure, it allows them to do other, you know, more important things. And then the, 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 the other thing about that is we're seeing the higher they can integrate up the stack, yes. the more value that they're getting. And I want so I wonder if you could Confirm or deny that if you have examples or you've seen similar type of, of, of traction in the marketplace in that regard. Yeah, well, I think that's that's essentially the, the value proposition of what we're doing. Um, and to me, the, the proof point is just success in the business. Um, but to me, definitely going from you know your compute nodes up into your memory, your networking, your storage, into your operating system, your virtualization, your management, your deployment, and ultimately into the middleware layer so that really what the client needs to worry about is the application on top, it's invaluable to them. Um, because they manage this through spreadsheets and, and documents and they have very few repeatable processes out there that they can actually deploy the same piece of software twice the same way because they've got hundreds of manual steps that are out there. And 
this value as they move up the stack is really being is really resonating with them. I remember I was at the Pure announcement when it was at 18 months ago or so. It was in April somewhere. I yeah, think, April in April 11th. Yep. And I I, had, I I ended up having lunch that day with with Steve Mills, and I asked them, um, "What's the premium that you pay for for Pure for this expert integrated systems?" He said, "There isn't one." I'm like, "Come on." There's got to be a premium. There's value there. And he goes, no, oh, trust me. I do all the pricing. I review everything to the detail. There's there's no premium. Right. We're pricing this thing, you know, at, at no no premium to relative to traditional servers. And I said, well, why won't wouldn't everybody buy that? And he was frank. He said, concerns about lock-in. Yep. Right. So I wonder if you could talk about that dynamic, how that's changed or not changed over the last 18 months. Well, I think why, the why wouldn't they buy? Yeah, and, and you know, lock-in is one of them. Um, there's, so if I look at the reasons why not and um, why clients wouldn't, lock-in is, is, lock is one of them. And that's why embracing open frameworks for patterns is really key so that you can then take it and move it somewhere else if mm -hmm. you want to. The second piece to it is organization. You know, here you have a system that's crossing the networking team, the storage team, the compute team, the middleware team, the development teams, and everything like that. And, you know, we have a concept, we have a, a saying, which is sometimes you're letting the turkeys vote for Christmas. They're not gonna vote yes. <laughs> um, and so so it's that organization, you know, momentum, I think, that that we have to get across and and jump that chasm for, I think is a, is a very important piece to it. And so we've written, you know, papers and helps clients with that um, because change is, is something that clients don't necessarily want or the, the people, the organization might not want and people naturally are resistant to change. Yeah, but the dollars are there. I'm sure you've seen yeah. the examples of just telephone yes. numbers and ROI. Yeah, so so yeah, and the, you know, the ROI numbers and the, you know, the returns are high double digits. You know, I, we've had some clients as high as 75%, 76%. I've seen um, just recently to, you know, mid to high 20s at, at the low end of it. And, you know, and once you get that, that's why you get that repeat buy, is because they first look at it and say, you're crazy, I don't believe you. Then when they see it, they validate it, they buy it themselves, and then they get into production, and they're like, wow, all my projects are going here, and that's what we're seeing right now. Jason, we got to wrap here, but I want to get one final question for you to end the segment. What's next for uh, Pure? What's on the horizon? Obviously, since we last talked, you guys chipping away at it. Big, big game changing ball down, move down the field to cloud, more enablement, more agile, more, more flexibility for customers. Um, with all the business outcome discussions, what's next on the roadmap? You manage product management, what's coming down the pike? I, I honestly, it's, it's, it's two things, right? One, which is, um, you know, continue on the on the roadmap. I think we've got something special for the the cloud in a box for your private, and then riding the wave on public. Um, everybody's going to be uh, wanting to be able to move workload to the public cloud. Patterns is a way to do it. We want to make that the simplest, easiest, you know, most cost-effective way for people to move to public cloud. And to me, that's that's a winner combination right there. Well, if you don't like patterns and the word patterns, think of them as Lego blocks. They're the same kind of thing. Leverage, good good yep. leverage, leverage existing. It's a sandbox. It is, Open yep. and uh, all about creating value. Jason, thanks for joining theCUBE. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. We got the Next Up segment analyst. We got David Pogue from uh, Yahoo, formerly the New York Times, coming up at 2.30. Stay with us.